It is so terrific to be back here because in this room, as Chuck suggested, my life changed radically about two years ago. And it was another beautiful Bellingham day. I've been to Bellingham three times, and the weather has been like this all three times. I don't understand this problem you have with the seasonal attitude disorder and needing, needing to come. Is that what it is? Is that the name of it? Yes, and needing to come down to San Francisco to get over it, where it's always foggy in San Francisco, as you know. So here I was, right here, talking toward the camera periodically because book TV was here. And the book that I was talking about was my book, Mission Rejected, which was extraordinarily difficult to research and write and to talk about because the stories in it are the stories of soldiers who came back from the war in Iraq, opposed to the war, or refused to deploy because they opposed the war. And hearing their stories and giving voice to their stories and then talking about it with audiences like this one was wearying and wearing and, and heartbreaking and all of, the, all of the emotions that I'm sure a lot of you have felt since the war in Iraq started. So here we were, and it was about an hour into the event. And it was a hotter day than it is today, Chuck, because I remember the, the lights from Book TV making me really hot and bothered. And, and there's no air conditioning down here because we don't need it when the weather's perfect. And it was crowded as it is today, and there was all that humid heat after about an hour. And let me read to you what I wrote in The Dangerous World of Butterflies, the book that came directly out of that evening here. The audience packed the ground floor of the store. Oh, I should back up one line here. One day up in Fairhaven, Washington, at Village Books, a vibrant, independent bookstore overlooking Bellingham Bay, I heard the query again. And the query is, what's your next book going to be about? It, it comes up inevitably at an event like this toward the end, about an hour into the talk, after the question and answer period has more or less run its course. Somebody almost always raises his or her hand and says, what's your next book going to be about? The audience packed the ground floor of the store, jammed onto folding chairs, and standing around the bookshelves. It was a hot summer night, and I had been up at the lectern reading from the Iraq book and answering questions for over an hour. I was wearing a suit coat that I could not take off without ruining the video of the event C-SPAN was recording because the microphone cord was snaked inside my jacket, and the microphone was clipped to my lapel. I was sweating under the hot lights the camera crew insisted were needed for a good picture, and the store was not air conditioned. Well, this time around, in case it gets hot, I made a deal with our sound guy. And as you can see, the microphone is not on my lapel coat. Instead, the blue Morpho butterfly pin, which comes up shortly in my talk here, is there. So if it does get hot, I can take off my jacket. So, so what happened next was, again, remember, please, hot and bothered an hour in, somebody raises her hand and said, what's your next book going to be about? And for reasons I cannot reconstruct, I said, butterflies and flowers. And there was a little titter through the crowd, just a little, but enough for me to say thank you very much and exit stage left and get my jacket off. And so that was that. I don't know where that came from. It was some kind of a metaphor for peace and love, I guess. I'm not sure. And, and then book TV started to show the hour. And as those of you who watch book TV may know, this cycles and it comes on different times, different days, and has an incredible audience. People watch it all over the place. And I was on the receiving end of an avalanche of email, because in the lower third here was my website, and so people could easily find my email address. And about half the letters were, were assaults, calling me a traitor for writing this book, and about half of the letters said, this is a very important book, and it's wonderful that you wrote it. And in the middle of all of that was an email that read as follows. Hi, I watched your book talk on C-SPAN from Bellingham, Washington. I'm impressed with the anti-war movement, but dismayed that things move so slowly. I was a young bride of a draftee during Vietnam. And I never understood why the anti-war movement did not recognize or sympathize with the anti-war soldiers. It was a very tough time for all, but it led me 
to our butterfly reserve at the same latitude as the place we lived in Thailand where we spent the war. Jokingly, at the end of your talk, you said your next book was going to be about butterflies and flowers. Let me offer one of our rustic bungalows to you when you seek a respite. It is a very beautiful and peaceful place. It is also good to be reminded what civil war does to a country. The scars in Nicaragua are not very deep, and it was signed Jane Folds. P.S., she wrote, this is a serious invitation. Good luck to you. The world needs a good butterfly book. Peace and tranquility await you at Nicaragua Butterfly Reserva. Come visit us. So what are you going to do when you get an email like this? What are you going to do when you get an email like this? What I did was I put it aside with all the incoming email and thought, all right, that's fun to get an email like that. And then a couple of days later, I looked at it again, and it was a pretty intriguing invitation. Now, uh, let me just mention that for the most part, I spent many years as an NBC News correspondent, and I've written several books, as Chuck suggested, and for the most part, they deal with really difficult social and political problems. Immigration, war, pestilence, misery, uh, awful stuff that we don't need to talk about now because there is the dangerous world of butterflies, and, and it was and became and still is my escape. I looked at the email a couple of days later, and it, it was so intriguing. I showed it to my wife, Sheila, who's here today, and she basically shoved me on an airplane for Managua. And that's how I met Jane Folds and her husband, Jerry. They were gracious hosts in Managua at the Butterfly Reserve that they run, which Managua, uh, Granada, outside of Managua. Granada is arguably the oldest European city in the Americas. It's a little crumbling now because of the problems in Nicaragua. They live up a dirt road on a few acres, where, which they call uh, La Finca de la Gringa or something like that, the, the, the gringo lady's farm. And, and, and there, in short order, they introduced me to a subculture. And, and really, there's a subculture almost anywhere. Undoubtedly, in the book business, there's stuff going on that we have no idea about, the ferry boat business, the coffee shop business, all these things that go on around here, conflicts. Uh, characters, strange doings, and, and in fact, I began to learn just in the first weekend with them that there, there is, under the veneer of butterflies and flowers, meaning peace and love, there, there are all sorts of issues of consequence. There are conflicts between butterfly breeders and and the types of people who like to look at butterflies the same way birders look at birds and don't think that there should be any commerce involved. There's habitat destruction that's leading to species going extinct and biologists doing amazing work bringing these butterflies back from the brink of extinction with arguments about why this is important. There is poaching going on in national parks of endangered species, the violation of, of federal laws, felony violations of law. There is international trafficking in butterflies that amounts to huge amounts of, of money. You can get a butterfly f that you can put on your wall if you want to violate the law. The Queen Alexandra's bird wing, and it'll cost you about $10,000 for one dead butterfly. So all of this started to show up for me as I was sitting and talking with, with Jane and Jerry Folds in their, in their reserva in Granada. Now, I can take this jacket off, which is really great because I'm not wired to it, and it is getting hot here, but I'm going to leave the butterfly here because it's a prop for later and, 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 and give you a, a sense of when I first realized that there was something here more, more than, than just the superficial, aren't they pretty? Jane Folds it has had, at the time, a couple of things going on in terms of trying to make a business. The two of them had created an enclosure where tourists could come, pay a few dollars, and walk amongst the butterflies. This is a new business, and, and they're all over the place. I'm sure there are a few in this neighborhood where you can see butterflies from all over the world and walk with them and they'll land on you.